Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm gonna be talking about what I consider essentially the most important thing you can do to uh, any photograph when you're editing and that is dodge and burn. But I'm gonna show you the ways that I do dodge and burn and I think it may change the way you look at it after this video. First I wanna tell you two things. Number one, I do have a free 27 page guide about editing in Luminar Neo that's available to all my newsletter subscribers. There's a link down below if you wanna check that out. And number two, there's a great Black Friday sale on Luminar Neo until December uh, December 1st. Save a lot of money, and with my coupon code, you can save even more. That's linked down below as well. Check those two things out if you're interested, and let's get into the photo. Now, this photo has already had a couple of edits applied. I started in Develop Raw, and what I did is pull down the highlights, lifted the shadows, and adjusted Smart Contrast. I'm generally doing that order uh, highlights shadows and then contrast these days so before there's the base raw file unedited and after and then i went into super contrast and made some adjustments there that's my one two punch i talk about that in my ebook that i referred to a moment ago but super contrast comes number two and that allows you to just get more control over the light so before and after it's pretty minor but it has a nice impact and so the entire before and after so far before and after that's our new starting point for this video. And as I said, I'm gonna talk about dodge and burn. Now, there's a tool at the very bottom in professional called dodge and burn. And uh, it's designed, of course, for dodging and burning. Now, if you're not familiar with dodging and burning, it's really just the idea, uh, dodging is lightening an area of the photo and burning is darkening an area of the photo. In other words, it's manipulating light. That's really all it is. There's lots of ways to manipulate light. The dodge and burn tool is designed for that. So you can take uh, click on lighten or darken or erase if you need to back out of something. But lighten, you pick the size of your brush. Let's say I do something like that. You pick the softness, which by the way, I recommend 100 on softness, which gives you a nice gradient edge. Again, masking is something I talk about in the ebook. And then you pick strength. You can do as much as you want. I generally recommend starting really low. So like a 12, 13, 15, something like that. And because I'm in lighten, which is dodging, uh, what I would want to do to manipulate this light is all you're really doing is creating more contrast in an image. You want to brighten some things that are bright or that you want to draw attention to, and you darken things that you want to like remove attention from, that you want to make a little bit darker. So, you know, you can come in and you can see it's lightening those areas as I'm kind of running over them with my mouse, right? So I can come up here and do this kind of stuff. You get the point. So before and after, right? Slightly lighter in those areas, and then the nice thing about the dodge and burn tool is you can just click on darken and go do the opposite, right? Which is maybe I want to come into these shadowed areas and add a little bit more shadow just to create more of that dappled light overall in the image. So that's a quick example of dodge and burn before and after. All I did, again, manipulate the light, make some things lighter, make some things darker. Why do we do that? because it's fun, uh, but no, the real important reason is that you're generally drawing attention to something by making it brighter and removing attention from something by making it darker. In other words, it's a way to direct the viewer's eye in the photo. Dodge and burn, incredibly important, super, super critical skill in editing, and I never use this tool. I literally don't use it. I'm gonna just remove that, and just to make sure, I'll go to edits, click delete, and get rid of it. I still have develop raw and super contrast, and you might think, Jim, you're making a video about dodge and burn. Why are you not using the dodge and burn tool? That's because I think there's better ways to do it. And you can do dodge and burn with a lot of tools. It's not just using your mouse there for that dodge and burn tool itself and just making some adjustments. There's lots of ways to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it in this video. And I'm going to start with develop because develop is the best tool in Luminar. Now, dodging and burning, brightening and darkening is something that's designed to be selective or masked in. So we're going to be in masking in this video. And what I want to do is get a mask and I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to get really low strength. Remember I said 12, 15, I get softness of 100 and I'm going to get size about like that. And all I'm going to do is kind of mouse over some of these areas and you can kind of see what's happening with my uh, the little bit of uh, pink that's showing up there as I'm kind of painting over these areas as I'm adding a little bit of brightening to them. So something about like that. I've got the mask in place, but I've made new adjustments. I'm going to come over here and now I can make the adjustments. And this is one of the things I like about it is I have the ability to come in, make the mask and then go and increase or decrease this as much as I want. Now, there's also an opacity slider or an amount slider in Dodge and Burn. 
I just prefer to do it this way. I feel like I have a little bit better control. So I'm gonna go to a point to brightening those areas. But here's a second reason that I like develop better than dodge and burn. It's because I have the temperature slider as well. And I adjust temperature in my dodging and burning all the time because when you brighten something, what am I doing? I'm taking areas where the sunlight is hitting it and I'm brightening them. So they're brighter. Shouldn't they be warmer? I think they should. So I come in with the temperature slider and I'm adding a little pop of warmth as well. I'm gonna to go to about 15, 16, something like that. So now those areas are brighter because of the sunlight and sunlight brings warmth. So they're warmer. And that's one of the things I like before and after. So that's one of the ways that I dodge and burn. Now I'm gonna go back in and do the opposite. And this is gonna be similar thing, brush, strength of like, let's call it 15 or 16, 14, let's do 13, why not? And I'm gonna come in and I wanna paint over some of the areas that are in shadow. So I'm just gonna pop around here. And sometimes I'll just, uh, instead of dragging my mouse, I'll just kinda click it and move it. And so it doesn't really take a, a mouse brush kinda shape, if that makes sense. I'm gonna hit that tree a little bit, some of this, a little bit of that tree. All I'm doing is creating a little bit more contrast in the image and creating a little bit of darkening. Now, the other thing that I like about this is, of course, the temperature adjustment. So first, let me go in and just remove, uh, make it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna do like a negative 0.5 and change. So 0.54, so before and after, pretty minor. But the opposite of bright and warm to me is darker and cooler. And that's the other thing I like to do. I like to pull the temperature down, uh, just like the opposite of what I did in the bright areas. And in this case, I'm just adding more blue in the, uh, the darker shadowed areas. So before and after. One of the things I do and I talk about a lot of my videos is I'm playing color contrast. I'm playing that game, if you will. The, the whole contrast idea is light and dark and adjusting those and creating more of a difference is higher contrast. I tend to do the same thing with temperature, right? Warmer and cooler and warm colors and cool colors. I play those off of each other. It's just another form of dodge and burn is just adjusting those things. So now that I've got that, I wanna go into some other ways I like to dodge and burn and that's with the color tool and specifically down here in HSL. The best part about HSL is that you have this section here, hue, saturation, and luminance. And I think luminance is the one that I probably use just about the most. And so I'm not even using a mask here. I'm just gonna take these yellow tones. There's a lot of yellow and a lot of green, right? So I'm gonna take the yellows and I'm gonna increase them about a 30 or so. So something about like that. So if you look at the yellow areas, which are also the highlight areas that we brightened earlier before and after, they're getting a little bit more bright. Uh, but then what did I do with the other areas that are in shadow, which are more of the greens? I darken them. So I'm just doing the same thing here, but I'm applying this across everything that the tool identifies as yellow or green. So it's not super selective, but in photos like this, it works just fine. So before and after, created a little bit more contrast because I brightened the yellows, I darkened the greens, I created more of that color contrast. That again, is an example of dodge and burn. But now that I've done that, I'm gonna actually open color again and there is a masking tool that works really well for this, masking, and that's color masking. This is a recent addition in the big fall upgrade with Luminar. I use it a lot, it's a fantastic tool and it comes in handy on so many photos. And what I wanna do is get over here and get this really dark green. So I'm gonna click that and you'll see it's gonna make a mask identifying that color uh, and that shade of that color all across the image. That looks pretty good. You can adjust the range if you wanna get more or less. I'm actually gonna go maybe a slight bit less just as part of my demo. And then what I wanna do is go down here back into HSL, but I'm gonna start in hue, the H of HSL this time. And I'm gonna take the greens and I'm gonna to go to about a positive 50. So all that is doing is making them a little bit richer green, a little bit more blue. So if I were to go left, it gets that green more toward the yellow. I'm going the other way, making it more toward the blue, or technically cyan, which is the next color on the uh, spectrum. And in fact, speaking of cyan, I'm gonna take the cyan away from the blue and get it more toward the cyan, something like that. So all I did is isolate those greens and uh, shift the hue a little bit. So before and after it cools them off a little bit, I don't even know if you can tell, but I'm not done. I'm gonna go into luminance. And what I wanna do is take the green luminance and bring that up, and I'm gonna bring that up about 40. So, you know, something about like that. I just brighten that a little bit after slightly shifting the hue before and after. And I realize that's slightly contrary to what I did earlier where I kind of darkened that and did a little bit of burning around there. My editing flow is very fluid. 
Um, I have guardrails, so to speak, that I put up for myself and try to stay within, but I don't always stay in the boundaries. I color outside the lines, so to speak. The point is, um, edit the photo the way you want to edit the photo, make yourself happy. And that's generally my, my feeling is if I like what I have, I'm going to go with it. So here I kind of undid a little bit of what I did earlier, but that's another example of dodging and burning color range mask, identifying colors, shifting hues and luminances of that color. So now that I've done that, there's another tool that I love, and that's an Enhance AI, and it's called Accent AI, and it's fantastic, and I'm not going to do that much. Uh, it does a lot to a photo, a lot more than just shifting the light, which is, of course, what Dodge and Burn is. It does other things like pop colors and all that, and so I think you have to be careful, but it does help with Dodge and Burn if you control it with a mask. So in this case, I'm going to get a luminosity mask, and what I want to do is go into kind of more of the midtones, and I'm going to play with those a little bit. So there's my mask, and I'm going to just contract that and contract that. See, I don't want it in the sky, so I'm going to pull this away from the highlights, get totally away from the sky, and it's cutting a little bit off of the, uh, the top of here, which is exactly perfect. And then I'm going to go drag this to get a little bit of a gradient, maybe shift that slightly left, maybe compress that tonal area, something like that. Every mask is different, so I do recommend experimenting. But now I've added a 14 on Accent AI just in those areas. And if you look at the before and the after, before and after, it, shi it slightly shifts the tones uh, in the sense of creating more contrast. So before and after. So it's a way of essentially dodging and burning once again. Now I'm going to use that mask. So before I leave that tool, I'm going to go into the mask action menu and click copy. And I'm going to close that and I'm going to go into toning, which is really a color tool. And so I'm going to go into masking, mask actions and paste. So if I show you that mask, same mask I just had, right? I just moved it over to this different tool. And what I want to do here is go into the highlights and I want to go to about a mid thirties, like 35, uh, sticking with the red just in the highlights, which is essentially a lot of what was isolated in that mask, some midtones and some of the uh, mid-tone areas. But if you look at the before and after, what I did is add a little bit of red to that, and that brings up some of the red in this dirt and some of the kind of brownish red that's in these uh, kind of dead trees. So it just gives a little bit of a color uh, look. So before and after, not exactly a dodge and burn, but you can come in and do something like mask, and this time paste again. Let me show you the mask. Same mask, a different instance of toning, but this time I'm going to invert it and use the opposite. So they're that's now inverted. And what I want to do is go into the blues in shadow. So I'm going to do about a 20 or 25, I think. I'm going to get this at 230, which is my number for blues. So there you go. And I've got an 18. And maybe I'll go a little bit higher, like 25, 26. All I'm doing is adding blue to the shadows. So before and after. But as you saw with the mask, it also bled across into a lot of the other tonal areas. So again, this is a little bit of the playing the warmth thing. Um, the warm colors and the cool color, colors off of each other. Not specifically a dodge and burn move, but it does uh, overall enhance the color look of the photo and creating more of that uh, warm and cool kind of interplay, I think actually helps with contrast. And again, contrast is the difference between bright and dark. Bright and dark is dodge and burn. So it all kind of goes together, at least in my head. That's the way I think of it. Uh, now that I've done that, I'm going to go into mystical, which I absolutely love and I use a lot and I'm going to go to about a 25. And if you look at the before and after, before and after, I'm not going to mask this tool because I don't really need to. Sometimes I will mask it, not in this case. But if you look at the before and after, again, before and after, it essentially darkens the shadows, creates a little bit more contrast. That's dodge and burn. Everything circles around the light. The entire edit is light. So before and after, a little bit more mood, slight bit more of contrast which creates a little bit more of that push-pull of the difference between the brighter and the darker, which again is dodge and burn. And the last move I would make here is actually to go play with that sky. I'm going to go back to develop, get a linear gradient, and I'm going to drop that in here at the top, kind of blend it in something like that. You want that nice gradient zone so you have a faded effect into the rest of the photo as opposed to an abrupt effect. And I want to darken that sky, so I'm going to go down like a negative 5, something like that, negative 6, and maybe not 6, uh, six. that's a little too high, maybe, maybe 0.6. And I also want to make it a little bit cooler, so I'm going to do like a negative 20 or something, maybe give it a tiny bit of tint, 
slight bit more temperature, just making a little bit more blue, but I also darken it. Darker is cooler, dodgy and burning. I'm essentially burning, but also adding a color uh, tint to the sky. So before, brighter, and after, it's darker. That's dodging and burning, my friends. That's a lot of different tools, and that's not all of them. You can kind of dodge and burn with not every tool, but very many of the tools in Luminar, and it gives you so much power and so much control. If you just always remember, it's about the light and creating that kind of visual tension, the difference between the bright and the dark stuff, the contrast, and that you can do that with things like color as well. Before and after, and let me show you the sliding window. Fairly flat, lacking color, but you can see dappled light. There's some contrast in the image. You just need to bring it to life. And that's what we did here, We're able to bring it to life by focusing on dodge and burn, playing up the areas where the sun is landing on the landscape, and then um, kind of removing focus by darkening areas where it's not landing and creating a little bit more of that visual tension and that color contrast and the light contrast before and after. That's how I like to do dodge and burn, my friends. A million ways to skin a cat, as they say. These are some of the ways that I skin that cat. And apologies to all the cats out there. But uh, that, my friends, is uh, an interesting and fun approach to dodge and burn. Hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching, hanging out. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.